Hello and welcome to Get Started in the Market. I'm Mandy Dillon. If you've thought about investing in equities but never quite figured out how, this is your moment. So let's get started. The human evolution dates back several million years. Our earliest Homo ancestors most likely descended from Australopithecus, a pharynxes, best known for the 3.2 million year old Lucy fossil, found in Ethiopia's Afar region. Okay, so let's not go so far back into our evolution. Let's start from here. The evolution of each one of us as we grow older. We change in our appearance, we learn how to do things, but it is not only this. As we grow, so do our needs and wants and desires. And to fulfill those, we need to constantly change our financial approach and manage our money smartly. In fact, you can maximize the use of your money by spinning it. You can actually make more money with the money you earn by rotating it freely between earning, saving and investing. Here's a simple flowchart that can help you understand. Whatever you earn, a part of it you will spend, wisely if I may add. But the remaining portion should move into your regular savings, keeping aside a portion of that for life contingencies. The rest of the money should move into your investments. Keep in mind the risks and some potential losses on investments. And you will notice that your money spinner is set in motion, with you reaping benefits of your investments which will result in additional earning. So all you have to do is make sure that you keep this cycle running. Park that information to one side. Let's talk about you, the potential investor, because investing is not a one-size-fits-all. So the first thing to figure out is what's your fit? So today on Get Started in the Market, joining me is Devir Singh Bhandari, 22 years old, really at the start of his professional journey with many questions about whether to invest, how much to invest, and how to invest. And we're going to get all the answers from Surya Bhatia, Managing Partner at Asset Managers. Great to have you both on Get Started in the Market. Thank you so much. And I think this is exactly what it is. How do you get started in the market? Before we set the ball rolling, Devir, tell us a little bit about yourself. So uh, I've just finished my graduation and uh, I have set up a private limited company which is called uh, DSB Entertainment and Productions and I'm the CEO of it. I'm a filmmaker by passion. It's been my dream to be a filmmaker. And uh, about a year ago I was wondering what do I do? Should, should I actually venture into my own stuff? Should I pursue my further studies? But uh, I took the second option. So I set up my own private firm. Wait, you know, when you think about where you are right now, what do you need? Right now, I need a perfect guidance. How would I invest my profit? How I can double the money up? And you need to double the money up because you want to grow your portfolio expand, of, of course, films. Of course, of course. So I think that that urgency is there. It's there. Okay, so we know a little bit about you and we're going to take a step back for a moment and just examine the basic principles of investing. You know, uh, Surya, Devir aside, anyone first needs to take a deep breath and say, what are my financial goals? Easier said than done. What are some of the things that you need to consider when you're setting your financial goals? I think you're very spot on on this because looking at his age, he just started, just finished his graduation. And I think at this age, you can really multiply your money. But the very critical part over here is we have to take out the noises because he'll be tending to hear from his family, parents, brothers, sisters, friends, colleagues, saying, let's do A, B, C, D, and it doesn't even end at Z. It just continues just uh, from there onwards. But the key is, you have to keep very, very simple, because at his age, which you and I cannot do at our ages, is that I can't multiply my, my, uh, my money at a particular rate. So that's where the power of compounding, which he will realize as he grows from hair, as he have more gray hair, works in his favor. Right. Power of compounding is the key. Even if I do very well for myself, he can beat me because of his age. Okay. That's what he needs to realize and try to just keep it very simple, very basic. And if he is able to do that, I think it's, he can really crack it. Okay, so let's compare someone in his early 20s with someone in their early 40s. 
Okay. And, and you know, how would our financial goals differ? See, the goals may not be different other than your basic goals. For example, he may, or not may, he wants to get married. And let's say we are married. Let's talk, I talk about myself. I am married. So my goals become different by default. So I want to plan for my kid's education. Now he wants to plan maybe for his education also. So basic goals will not change. It could be your education. It could be your child's education. It could be your marriage or it could be your kid's marriage. Similarly, you may want to, now the common goals could be he wants to travel, I want to travel. He has a common retirement goal and so have I. But my retirement goal is maybe 25 years down the line, 20 years down the line. It could be 40 years down the line. Right. That's the basic difference. The goals basically cannot change unless you really want to do something different. He may want to invest in his company, okay? But for me, it's again an asset class which needs to have a percolation period. Because for me, it's an equity asset. Because if I want to pump in money into my business, it's actually like investing into stocks. So I will not look at equities for him. I'm saying, if you are confident about your business, about your model, please invest in yourself. Because that's what a company is. Okay. Our aim is to take Devir's example and put some messages out there for all our viewers who are watching. Devir, do you know anything about investing at all? Well, um, now being my age and being my knowledge, what I've achieved and what I've figured out, of course, I'm quite limited. I would need guidance. And uh, I'm glad Surya is here. He could uh, take us to uh, a higher level and could, gu you know, could guide us on how to um, invest well. Okay, when we say, Surya, investments, what are the potential options out there? Before you even go to that stage, understand what investments are all about. I think there's a basic difference between savings and investment. So there are basic few premises which you need to understand how to really go to that stage. You have to take it step by step. If I just define the steps over here, you first understand what your incomes are. His income is not a fixed income per month, being running his own production house. So therefore, define how your income could shape up in years to come or in a short span of time. How could my income be there on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis? So define that income, understand your expenses. It's good to write down your expenses because you believe I can control my expenses, but when you really write it down, you'll be pleasantly surprised or be shocked to be really shocked to see what your expenses are. So defining your income and expenses will lead to a surplus of income, hopefully surplus huh? at his age. So if there's a surplus, that surplus of saving needs to be converted into your investments. Second stage comes when you define what your goals are, as he mentioned. So you need to define those goals. Now the goals can actually be broken up into maybe a short-term goal, medium-term goal, and long-term goals. Absolutely. At the same time, you can even prioritize your goals. Some goals may be very, very close to my heart. Let's say my kids' education, they're very close to my heart. I need to provide that. So the way we call it as, you need to achieve it, come what may. So those are sacrosanct goals for me. So these goals, I need to ensure that are kept in a very, very safe zone. Okay. That's how we come from. Second could be maybe my luxury goals. I want to travel for a holiday. Maybe I am aiming for, a, let's say, a Mauritius travel. But in case it doesn't work out, I'm happy to go up. So that's where I can take very high risk. Okay. Because they're not going to change my game in a big way. So if you are able to define your goals, you'll be able to articulate well what your investment strategy would look like as you go forward. Third is to define what your financial plan could be based on your incomes and your goals which typically you are framed for. But very critical part is you have to merge your expectation with your desires. What you really want to achieve may not be because of your limited means, but you really want something more. So you have to marry the two together and try to achieve it because if there are huge differences, you will not end up saving. That's a practical problem in today's world. Okay. Next come, sorry. Next come is the implementation of that followed by the review of it. Okay, so you know, we're going to fast forward a little bit here and I don't want to, you know, delve into your financial situation, no, no. but let's say that you have, and would it be fair to say that you have about 50,000 rupees a month at your disposal, which you're willing to invest. Is that a fair number to take? Fair enough. Okay, yeah, so let's take that, Devir, as our starting point. Does it seem reasonable that you'll set aside 50,000 rupees? Are you willing to make that sacrifice? I can, I can, I can. Maybe a little more as well. That's not bad. Think it through. I can. I have been doing that, but the only thing is the guidance, how to invest well. So, uh, so 50 to say 75,000, that's, that, that's a, that's a uh, well, a large sum of money. It's a good amount of money with the sage uh, for sure. Yes. It is, uh, Let's take so, yeah. 50,000. And that's what you've got to invest in. And traditional, uh, traditionally, people go for 
you know, a fixed deposit and they say I park it there and I break that fixed deposit whenever I need the liquidity. But how should they really view the options? See, as a trend goes, I think uh, we Indians are typically married to three asset classes. One is your fixed deposit, as you mentioned. Second is gold and third is real estate. All your assets are spread in these three assets only. And all asset classes have their own advantages and disadvantages. But if I look at only as a 50,000 as a number, it's very hard to really do an allocation over here. Because where I really come from is to understand what his needs are. Assuming he says, I want to invest this 50,000 at this age, no dependence on me, I can just look at long term. Then by default, at his age, being on his side, you have to look at high risk. So therefore, equities has to be the way. But it doesn't mean you have to put blindly the money in equities. Start systematically. So do SIPs. Because if you can contribute on a monthly basis, SIPs are the best way to start saving for long term. Because that's how you really built up your wealth. You can actually make sure compounding works in your favor. Rupee cost averaging also works in your favor, which can really lead to good accumulation over a period of time. Okay. So, you know, what are some of the uh, pros and cons? And I want you to dig deep and think about the cons as well on the equity path. See, all investments carries, as I said, the advantages and disadvantages. For example, equities, if you talk about, are very high risk asset classes, very volatile, very risky. But if you hold that for long term, the probability of losing money diminishes a lot. There was a, there was a study I was reading about that the probability of losing money in equity becomes zero if you hold it for more than eight years. Now, that's a lot to say about equities. But between that eight years is your capacity to hold, which most people don't have. Or if they have, they get so much kind of bogged down by the volatility attached to that asset class that they end up redeeming that. Very good example is the year 2008, if I just go by flashback. That same investment done on 23rd January 08 is giving me a CAG return of 8 to 9%. Not great, but it went down by 60% by March 2009. That's all. That's it actually sums up everything. Because if you can hold on, there is no reason why you can't make money. This is a rapid fire round coming your way, Devir. You've told us you're willing to set aside 50,000 rupees a month. Have you ever invested in the stock market? Not yet. Do you believe that you have the stomach or the risk appetite to invest in the stock market? I do. You do? I do, I do. Uh, at this particular moment, would you admit that you're giving me that yes answer without really knowing much. I am admitting it. Okay. I am, I am. I'll okay. stick to it. What is your biggest desire at this stage? To grow your capital fast? Uh, you know, seeing our generation, everybody wants to get rich very quick. Everybody wants to be settled by the age of 25, 26 with their own businesses. And, uh, you know, now we are the job seekers. We are the job creators now, you know. So, I mean, I hope that we entrepreneurs, we do a better job and we can employ more people. We can reduce the unemployment in India, which is, of course, happening. And uh, Have you considered very carefully the fact that to actually get substantial returns in the equity market, you need to take a longer-term view? Therefore, the temptation to, to get in and out must be resisted. It's about time. It's about the wait. Okay. So you're ready to get sort of, yeah. um, you know, oriented like that. Totally, completely. You, you mentioned um, SIPs. Now, again, for a layperson who's watching, there are three entry points. You could do the SIP route. You could, uh, uh, you know, there are exchange traded funds to consider. And there's, you know, just direct stock picking. Uh, based on your experience, what's the best way to proceed? I think we are staying in a country which is a developing country. So ETFs are definitely a, a big yes but it will take time for it to really uh, give you a returns which are equal to managed by active fund managers. Just to give you a brief that ETFs for our, our, our uh, viewers, ETFs typically are a mirror image of the typical benchmarks. So they're in true sense a basic indice which you are buying. It could be any, any uh, link, could be a BSC 30, could be a Nifty, could be anything, could be a banking. So it's, it's better for a, a starting point of view Look at diversified funds managed by active fund managers from good fund houses and start SIPs vis-a-vis -vis either going through an ETF route or even buying direct stocks. That's a big no for a starting perspective. When you really grow up and push up your and you want to diversify further, then you can look at stocks provided you have the right knowledge, acumen, time, effort. You can provide to that. But at this stage, I think you should concentrate more on his work and make that grow. As I said earlier, it's actually a stock which he has invested himself. So make that grow in multiple times. Because that's the thing he can do best. 
as we wrap up this conversation, you know, uh, there are always some golden rules of investing. And I know you've touched upon them, Surya, but if you could just revisit one or two key golden rules for Devir to remember. Diversify, for sure, but don't over diversify. There's a very thin line between the two. So spread your assets in various asset classes. Always rebalance your portfolio periodically, which means review your portfolio every six months to one year. Don't time the market. You cannot. It's the time which you spend in the market that's more important for you. Don't leverage yourself for financial assets. That's what you see a trend. So don't do that, because leveraging will make you need to earn double, which means your money needs to make even earn more faster for you. So these principles, if you basically follow, I think you should do the trick for you. Great. So we're ready to get started in the market, and the ball is indeed rolling. Well, don't go anywhere just yet. On the other side of this break, we detail how to invest in one of the most lucrative options that we just discussed with Surya, the stock markets. Also, find out what it really means.